All right, hey friends, good day to you all. God bless you. Welcome to today's study of the Word of God. Well, we're going to be picking it up today, 2 Samuel chapter 6. Uh, before we get started in our Bible study today, let's go to our Father in prayer. So, Yahweh, Heavenly Father, I pray that you open the eyes and open the ears of your children today and let us receive uh, the message, the wisdom that you would have us receive from your word, for that is where all wisdom comes from, is from you and your word. So in Yeshua's name, uh, Jesus' precious name, let's get right into it. Book of Second Samuel chapter 6, verse 1, and it reads, Again, David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. This would be probably all his fighting men, too. And David arose and went with all the people that were with him from Baale of Judah. This Baale, this is the old Canaanite name for Kerjath Jerim. To bring up from thence the ark of God, whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts that dwelleth between the cherubims. The Lord of hosts in Hebrew, this is Yahweh Sebaoth. Verse 3. And they set the ark of God upon a new cart. And this is going to end up uh, being trouble. Why? Because this was contrary to God's uh, divinely prescribed law. You can find it in many places. Numbers chapter 4 verse 15 7 uh, verse 9 chapter 10 verse 21 Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 8 and Joshua chapter 3 verse 14 the Kohathites of the tribe of Levi, Levi were the only ones that were allowed to to touch to transport the ark and they were supposed to carry it on staves on poles so it's not supposed to be transported on uh, a new cart and this is going to bring trouble and brought it out of, and brought it out of the house of Abinadab that was in Gibeah. And Uzzah, and Uzzah means strength. <clears throat> and Uzzah and Ahio, Ahio means brotherly, the sons of Abinadab drave the new cart. Verse 4. And they brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was at Gibeah, accompanying the ark of God. And Ahio went before the ark. <clears throat> Verse 5. And David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord on, excuse me, on all manner of instruments made of fir wood, even on harps and on psalteries, and on timbrels, and on cornets, and on cymbals. Verse 6. And when they came to Nacon's threshing floor, Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of God, and took hold of it, for the oxen shook it. Uh, it, it, was, it was He was trying to keep it from, from falling over, falling off the cart. Verse 7. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and God smote him there for his error, for touching the ark. And there he died by the ark of God. God not messing around. Verse 8. And David was displeased, because the Lord had made a breach upon Uzzah. This means he broke forth upon Uzzah. And he called the name of the place Perezuz, Perezuza, until this day. And Perezuza means break, break of Uza or breach of Uza. Verse 9. And David was afraid of the Lord that day and said, How shall the ark of the Lord come to me? Question. How, how's it, how's it going to get here? How's it gonna, how am I going to bring it to... Jerusalem, verse 10. So David would not remove the ark of the Lord unto him into the city of David, 
but David carried it aside into the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. Verse 11. And the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, three months. And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. Verse 12. And it was told King David, saying, The Lord hath blessed the house of Obed-Edom, and all that pertaineth unto him, because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with gladness. Verse 13. And it was so, that when they bare the ark of the Lord that when they that bear the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, this is about approximately 20 to 30 feet, he sacrificed oxen and fatlings. 14. And David danced before the Lord with all his might, and, the, and David was girded with a linen ephod. <clears throat> 15. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. There they're celebrating. 16. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michal, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. 17. And they brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in his place in the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it. This is a, a, a tent. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. Verse 18. And as soon as David had made an end of offering burnt offerings and peace offerings... He blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. 19. And he dwelt among all the people, even among the whole multitude of Israel, as well to the women as men. Excuse me. And he dealt among all the people, even among the whole multitude of Israel, <clears throat> as well to the women as men, to every one a cake of bread, it means he distributed a cake of bread, and a good piece of flesh, and a flagon of wine. This word uh, wine is added. So all the people departed every one to his house. <clears throat> Verse 20. Then David returned to bless his household. And Michal, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today, who uncovered himself today in the eyes of his handmaids, of his servants, as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncover him, uncovereth himself. She means that uh, David went out before the people, before the men and the women, uh, dancing in... Uh, his normal clothes, uh, which was a, a skirt, and and she's saying that that he he was showing himself uh, while he was dancing to these women and and to to the eyes of the handmaids. <clears throat> Verse twenty one. And David said unto Michal, It was before the Lord, which chose me before thy father, and before all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord of Israel. Therefore will I play before the Lord. He said, I was playing music and dancing before the Lord uh, and to the Lord, not have anything to do with the people. I wasn't worried about about the, the women or the men. I was, I was uh, celebrating before the Lord. 22. And I will yet be more vile than thus undignified, and will be base in mine own sight, humble. He doesn't have to be out in his priestly or in his kingly robes. He can be out in normal clothes. And of the maidservants which thou hast spoken of, of them 
shall I be had in honor. 23. Therefore, Michal, the daughter of Saul, had no child unto the day of her death. And that's going to be the final verse of chapter 6. And we're going to conclude today's study of God's Word. Uh, God took the time to write us this letter. Uh, it contains everything that you would need to know to make it through this flesh life and uh, feed your spirit. Uh, if you take the time to read it and study it, you can expect to be blessed. Uh, God's pleased with his children that love him and serve him and take the time to study his letter. Uh, you're doing that. How do I know that? Because you're watching this uh, this Bible study of the Word of God right now. All right. I love you all. God loves you more. He's the one you want to please. Uh, do not miss the next lecture. And thank you all for watching.